Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable, I'm really excited to have another female voice, Rachel Mueller. Rachel, how are you? I'm doing well, Mark. Thank you. Where are you and Sean traveling right now? So we're actually in the car, literally traveling. We're in Louisiana right now. Okay, now why Louisiana? You can go anywhere in the world. What's in Louisiana? <laughs> Another salt and straw? And we did. We have gone everywhere in the world. Uh, but no, we've got family in Louisiana. Sean's from here originally, so we decided to come down here and spend some time visiting with people. Really? Sean doesn't have that Nolens accent at all. Does he get, does he, because he, he kind of come back? He worked hard to get rid of it. <laughs> he did. But when he's back at home, does it come out? Like when people go back home to like New York? And all of a sudden they start talking. The, the y'all get thrown around a lot. Okay, great, great. Um, also on this week's round table, the always unflappable, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? Doing well, thanks. Great, great. Um, I've got nothing nice to say about you right now. Tate Litchfield, the big papa. Tate, how are you? Great, thank you. Team Tate. I'm not drinking from your coffee mug, by the way. You should. It tastes better. I know. I know. Thank you, Karen and Ken Archibald. And last but not least, he's, uh, you know what? He's right off of his 20-year honeymoon from Hawaii. You know him. You love him. Six Sigma. Scott Todd. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm great, man. How are you? Uh, I'm great. I'm great. I just want to remind everybody that today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io. Um, Go to geekpay.io and get your, start setting up your first note for free. Get your invite. Um, let's get into it, guys. So, Scott, let's start with you. You're gone on your honeymoon, and you were gone for how long? Uh, eight days. Okay, so walk us through how the business performed and what you did on your honeymoon. Because I imagine your wife was like, Scott, stop All checking your right. email. Or, or did that even happen? So kind of walk us through it. Eric's laughing. Okay. He's like, he's like I know well, that happens. Well, uh, Mark, I got to tell you something. The, um, in the eight days, I think we had our best, like, I don't know, eight day run probably of the year. I think we were like, uh, I don't know, almost 80 to a hundred thousand dollars of total sales for the, for the, uh, week. Right. <laughs> Uh, they were just popping. These sales were just popping. We had, um, we had a property that, um, that I had purchased for, I don't know, it was a, it was a 160 acre property purchased it for like $12,000. We sold it for 55,000, uh, with like $2,000 down. That's a nice and, note. And, um, after we wrote it up, the guy called back and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want the ability to pay this thing off in three years. Give me the cash price for three years. And we said, okay, pay it off in three years and you can have it. So we had to do an addendum, <laughs> rough life, right? So I had to go in there and sign the addendum on that one. Uh, the rest of them I didn't have to sign, but I had to sign that addendum. The, the rest of the week, man, like the rest of the week, I kid you not, like I really didn't work. I mean, you know, the ads continue to go out because of uh, VAs intakes it continued to run marketing and sales continued to run i literally uh just high fived my wife because of like all of the all, every time we had a sale you know i'd get the i get an alert when we get in a sale and it was just constant like high fives i'm like man this is the greatest place ever i got to move here so i have even better weeks i think there's something in hawaii you know it, it's so interesting now what about just emotionally um stepping away and being gone for that long, you're on an island. Yeah. Um, how did you feel about it? I, yeah, I felt, I felt okay. Like I was okay with it because, you know, typically in, in, my, um, in my normal day, I don't, I'm only working maybe like 10 hours a month uh, on the business, max I'd say, right? So, you know, right. take an email here or there or whatever. I did have to sign some deeds. I, I had to do that because I, um, I do still sign my deeds. But I was able to sign the deeds, not a problem. And uh, it was easy. Wow. Wow. Um, Rachel, what, you know, you know, as Scott was telling his story, 
you and Sean are completely mobile running this business. Um, how, how do you guys kind of handle that? Because, you know, he's in one place with internet connection. You guys are mobile. How does that work for you two? You know, it's not too different. As long as you have a strong internet connection and you've got your systems in place, things just kind of seem to work. And oddly enough, like Scott was saying, sometimes you end up having your best sales when you're on vacation. I don't know why that is, but it tends to happen where if you take a day off, things just keep rolling while you're away. You've got your VAs who are handling marketing and ads and intakes keep moving along and it, everything just kind of moves along swimmingly. Wow. I mean, Tate, when you're gone, do you ever feel like your purpose is kind of gone now? Like, you're, you're like, do you feel badly like, or guilty? I'm vacationing, I'm not working, and it's like the, the outside world doesn't need me? Yeah. Does that I ever mean, go through your head? I mean, I don't really feel bad about it, but uh, it has gone through my head a few times. Like, man, look at all these. I mainly see it a lot when I'm riding my bike, right? Because I ride my bike when it's nice outside, not when it's cold. And um, I often will ride past the freeways or something like that in the mornings and I'll see all these people waiting in line, you know, in traffic. And I'm like, oh man, those poor, poor people, bumper to bumper traffic. <laughs> and, you know, I'll get pinged periodically. Congratulations. You made a sale. And it's like, oh, I'm going to keep riding today. I'm not going home. So I know the feeling and it's the greatest feeling. Like Rachel said, the weirdest stuff happens when you're on, you know, on the road or, or on vacation. And when you're not, you're not desperate, it just seems to happen. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Yeah. Eric Peterson, what about for you when, when you, and you go away, I mean, and the business is running and what's, what's that like for you? I mean, does, do you, do you have it to a point now where it's completely automated? No, no, I still do um, a number of pieces of the business. So, um, you know, I can't go away uh, like everyone else and, and basically let the business go. I still need to be involved at this point in time. Um, but, you know, I mean, certainly I've, while I've been away and spending less time on the business or, or minimal time, you know, every now and then a sale will come through. And um, a lot of times, you know, those are some of the easiest ones to, to, uh, to close and complete. And, you know, maybe, maybe there is something to just being on vacation and, you know, not uh, putting all your focus into the business. So, um, yeah. Yeah, Scott, I mean, while you're gone, did you find any um sort of bottlenecks in the business that would make you more efficient when you came back besides i mean for me i, I like the one that's glaring to me is you shouldn't be the one signing the deeds uh yeah i mean that's that's always one to me it's not uh really that big of a deal um with simply file so you know i batched them up yeah. not not a big deal I, you know I, I look i think that there's always a way to um to refine your business right and I kid you not, I, I mean, I talk about this all the time, is every single month I sit down and I redraw my business end to end. And I'm constantly asking, like I'm constantly looking at this whiteboard. We talk, talk about this at boot camp at the, um, in the advanced sessions as we talk about the, the uh, swim lanes. It is literally by redrawing this thing every single month, it really forces me to look at it and say, why am I doing this? Do I love it? Do I like it? Do I hate it? And just like anything in life, I mean, you can rotate around and just find things that you don't like anymore in your business and then get rid of them. But I, by redrawing this thing every single month, I'm telling you, it, when you do that end to end, like start all over with a clean sheet of paper, it forces you really to think about why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And you get to the point where you only do the stuff that you love. I mean, that, that's, I think that's a mindset shift. Like, um, I mean, Rachel, do you and Sean ever have should syndrome? Like we should be doing this. We should be doing that. We, you know, or have you gotten over it? No, I think we definitely did when we first started, you know, when we first, it's crazy to say we've been traveling for seven months. So I would say about six months ago when we first started, we definitely had that where, you know, we were in Europe and we wanted to take the afternoon off because we're in Europe but you feel guilty, right? Because it's like, well, I should be doing something. And then you slowly just kind of realize that as long as you have those systems in place, things are gonna run the way that they should. Um, and you give yourself that time to 
take some time off, which I think ends up being healthier and helps you be a stronger worker for your business when you are back sitting at your desk. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Tate, does, does your wife ever look at you and be like, Tate, what are you doing today? Like, are you working? Yeah, and most of the time she says to me, since you're not working here, take the baby. So uh, <laughs> maybe I need to start working more or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Look, I had that same thing when my kids were young. Like, it's, it's like a blessing and a curse because you're always available and she can run out. I loved it. And then I was yeah. like, wait a second, maybe I should be marketing some land right now. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I mean, it's a great thing and it's not, I'm not complaining by any means, but it is, there are certain times when I sit down and I go, okay, I did, I've done my three most important things of the day and it's 1030 in the morning uh, and there's nothing on TV. So I guess I'm going to hang out, just play with the family. So that should feeling it, it's weird to get over. I guess it comes with, uh, with time, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, selfishly, I, I think you, sh- you guys should move out here so that I have somebody to bike ride with. That At would least work. for like the first two miles, and then you can go the rest. <laughs> well, you've got an e-bike, so you'll be able to keep up fine. Yeah, it only goes 50 miles on the charge, though. How far are you going? Well, it depends on the day, but I mean, 50 miles would be a good ride. But but yeah, Mark we... needs the e-bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We'd make it work. We'd make it work. Oh, I love that oh. e-bike. Don't, don't knock it till you, till you try it. It's, it's, it's the fine, especially like pedal assist when you're going up the hill, you know, nee! it's so good. Um, Eric Peterson, do you ever have should syndrome? I should be doing this. Or I should be doing that. I mean, do you ever have like that sort of, you know, survivor's guilt that, you know, I don't have to work 60 hours a week. Like, well, like all my other friends. Yeah, I guess maybe, maybe I would say I do. I mean, I, um, being that I work from home and, and have for, for quite a while, you know, I just, I kind of feel like, you know, I have set hours, I'm in the office, I'm working, you know? Um, so, so yeah, to an extent, I think I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it, it takes some time getting used to, it. I mean, Scott, do you ever have survivor's guilt? I mean, it's been a while now, <sighs> but when you like in the beginning, you know, I think you had, I think you struggled with, I think you struggled uh, going out of the boat and just kind of relaxing. Oh, I did. I did. I, I still, you know, I think to this day, you still think like you need to be doing something more, right? Like, um, you know, Mark, I, I mean, there was, there was a day where, uh, my wife wanted to kind of take a nap. So, um, you know, kind of relax because of the time change and everything. So I went down stairs and basically hung by the pool from, um, I don't know, like, uh, I must say like five o'clock till about, I don't know, four thirty to about six and in the sun sets about five forty five over there. So I'm sitting there by the pool, uh, kind of with my laptop. And I, I mean, like I felt like I needed to do some work, but I, at the same time, I really didn't have any work to do. Right. Like, so then right. I'm like, I'm like purposely like going out and trying to figure out like, what can I do? And so I'm like looking at websites, trying to figure out like, you know, I just, just to satisfy my guilt, right? Like, you know, I feel like I got to do something here. I can't just sit here and relax. And, uh, I, I mean, I, I took a picture of my, my laptop cause I'm facing the water and I'm thinking like, this is the moment that you realize like that the passive income is there and you really don't need to stress about this. And it's also that moment where you realize like, I could, I could live here. <laughs> I could live here if I wanted to and really not have to like sweat, like, Oh man, what am I going to do for money? It, it was a great feeling. Yeah. I, I had that same kind of thing in, in, uh, in Newport beach in July. I took all of July off and, and we had a great month in July and I was like, gosh, I should take every month off. <laughs> it's going to be like this. But, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, I've been doing it for so long now. I, I think I, I ebb and flow between, you know, um, I, f- I feel like I should be doing something. And then to the point like, well, you know, it's almost like you have too many options with your time. Like, w- w- what do I want to do with my time? And, um, and that's where uh, the hobbies come in, the, the electric bike and books and all that good stuff. The problem is finding somebody else to, to hang out with because everybody's working. It's like Tate, Tate's nodding his head. Like, yeah. 
it's boring at times. Like, you know, I, I, I remember I was, when I was first getting started, I was texting my buddies cause a movie came out and I was like, Hey, let's, uh, let's go to lunch and then catch a, you know, a midday movie. And it's like, what, what are you talking about? It's not the weekend. It's like, Oh, that's just a Tuesday. Um, all right. Well, I'll talk to you on Saturday then, you know, it was kind of, you gotta find somebody to, to hang out with. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Rachel, like when you're like the European lifestyle is very much like that though. Like they're not all about work, work, work. No, in Europe, especially in Spain, I mean, you were lucky if you could go to a business and they'd be open during their said business hours. Everyone takes a siesta in the afternoon and it, they just choose how long they want to be closed. So they siesta usually after lunch, maybe around like two or three. And then it's, up to them if they feel like going back to work and opening up around four five maybe just be open for a few more hours and then oh it's dinner time we got to go have drinks with our friends and close down i mean it's a really different mindset yeah yeah i mean i think you know gary v and grant cardone would be rolling their eyes right now about that lifestyle but i think there's a, a lot to be said about it once you get to that point where your passive income exceeds your fixed expenses and and maybe you've got, you know, to the point where you've got like a year's worth of cushion. Um, why not relax, right? I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Eric, what do you, what do you think? Anything, anything wrong with it? No, absolutely not. I mean, if you've reached a point where, you know, you've got your fixed expenses covered and, and you're comfortable and uh, I, don't, I don't see why not. Uh, Rachel, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, absolutely. <laughs> I was completely going to agree with you. I mean, it's, it's almost scary too how easy it is to fall into that lifestyle. Um, it's just such a comfortable way to live. It's so healthy. Yeah. What about you, Tate? Uh, same thing. I mean, I think it's a good, I think it's the only way to live. Uh, once you've experienced it and, and you feel comfortable with where you're at, I mean, it's the greatest feeling. And, and I think that's how life's supposed to be lived, right? You're not supposed to be in a cubicle, punching the clock all day. I think, you know, for me, my family is very important. So if the baby needs to, you know, go to the doctors, I'm going to go. It's, it's pretty amazing that I can say I've been to pretty much every single event in her life this, thus far. And I'm proud of that. That's and that's what this, that's what this business has allowed. Right. So right. Right. No, it, it has. And in fact, Scott, I think we should start, you know, editing what we tell people now, like, well, why are you teaching all these people? how to do what you do. I mean, let's say, look, we're lonely. We need more people to hang out with. <laughs> if we don't get you out of subtle economic dependency, like, you know, Scott's in Florida, Tate's in Vegas, Eric's in Tennessee, Rachel's all over the place, Sean's all over the place. Like, we, have, we need someone to hang out with. We, we got to create more friends. Well, I mean, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm volunteering at this place called Kivel, which is uh, an old folks home. Like, these are the people I can hang out with and play Rummy Cube. <laughs> I'm dominating Rummy Cube, by the way. These, these 70 year old women, they don't know what they've gotten themselves into. And I talk <laughs> trash, by the way. I'm like, that's oh, right, Esther. It's over. Done. I do that with my kids, uh, like dominate games with them, you know. I, I drop the whole thing. I'm like, done. That's right, Myrtle. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Oh. Um, so, yeah, but, uh, you know, that's, that's who's like, hanging out now um for the most part so maybe we'll uh maybe we'll do like a uh i i you know have total freedom cruise and we'll all get together and do like a cruise for, for all those those land geeks that you know are you know doing that i don't know what do you think eric yeah good let's idea do let's yeah. do it all right well, let's, let's move on to the next topic <laughs> Um, Scott, tell us a story about this buyer. Oh man, I got this guy that, um, bought a property from me. Now, Mark, I, I think I paid, I think I paid like $250 for this property. Right. And, um, we sold the property for a hundred down and a hundred a month for 12 months. Okay. okay. So I paid 200 for it. He put down a hundred. That means I was into it for a hundred. And you know, as, as I'm saying this, 
I'm kind of, I should have, I should have held that piece back. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to go through with it. Cause I should, I should have put it through, but, um, but I got the, so, so essentially what happened was he paid on the land for about seven months. Okay. So I collected $700 from him and then he vanished, like vanished, 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 like gone, like nothing. And you know, this is about a year and a half, two years ago. And he just showed up today and put a hundred dollars down on a property, paid a new doc fee. Didn't tell anybody that he'd ever done this. I saw the name. I recognized the name and I'm like, Oh, I know this guy. So he bought another property from me and it's the same kind of property. One we paid, I don't know, we probably paid like $150 now and uh, sold it to him again for, you know, $1,300. $1, and uh, it got me thinking like, do I want to tell this guy no, like I'm done because like you get one deal with me or do I... Am I, should I be excited about the fact that there's a dang good chance this guy could repeat and I could turn around and sell his property? Because that's what I did is I turned around, sold the property again. And I think I sold that property like three times. I mean, like it, it was great, man. It was like a great ride on that one. But, you know, what would you do? Like, and would it change if, if it was a bigger deal? Would it change if it, you know, like because of this is like a smaller deal? Does that matter? What, what, what do you guys think? Uh, Rachel, what would you do in this situation? You know, it's funny. We actually had something very similar happen. It was not as long a time period in between, probably about six months, but similar situation, cheaper property, sold it to the guy, made a few payments, and then just fell off the face of the earth. And like six months later, he circled back around and wanted to buy another lot. And, you know, I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, situations change if they have the money and they want to give it another shot, you know, worst case scenario, you just take it back and resell it, right? Like there's nothing really to lose. And if anything, you're just giving them another opportunity to maybe change your view about them. Yeah. I, I like that attitude. Eric Peterson. What about yeah, you? I'd definitely let him buy another property. I mean, came out ahead in the first one, right? I mean, seven months of payments and you know, I mean, you made money on that. So um, why not try it again? If, if he pays for the whole property, that's awesome and, and great. And, you know, he gets the deed, but if not, you know, it's not that big of a deal to deal with the default and send a couple letters and, and move on. So I'd definitely do it again. Tate, what about you? Uh, I, I would do it again and I have done it again. Same situation. I've had the same lady, She's bought two, defaulted on both of them, and now she's on her third with us. So, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I, I can't think of a good reason why you wouldn't do it again because, like, I think that's the beauty of our model is that we're using these land contracts and there's no cost of foreclosure. We're, you know, if you're using Geek Pay, it's all automated. So, if they miss the payment, they get an automated notification. Uh, with LG Pass, it's a button. It takes, what, two seconds to do a notice of default? Scott, how long? Uh, a second? Well, it, that's not, yeah, it's, that's still in uh, the prototype in LG Pass. But, uh, yeah, it's fast. It's fast. So, I mean, let, let's say that, you know, the worst case scenario is you got some money and you got to get another down payment and someone else paying again. Like, it just extends out your ROI, extends out the note. I, I can't think of a good reason not to honestly um scott i mean do you have a good reason like can you even play no, devil? I, mean, yeah, I, like, I can't even play I, devil's advocate here i i mean like I, i'm looking at it and my first instinct was no no not this guy again but then i'm like i i'm hoping right because like now mark it's to the point where you know once i think once you get to the point where your expenses are good you know like in terms of you know being able to i don't know I, I don't know if it has anything to do with that or not, but like for me, the passive income exceeds the, the, uh, the income that I need all is good. So then at this point, I'm like, eh, some will, some won't, who cares? Let me retake it back. Let me sell it. There's no downside. Okay. I lock up some, some land for a few months. Big deal. It's like rent, renting land, right? Like perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Eric, can you play devil's advocate here? Well, the, the only thing I could possibly come up with that, you know, could present a problem is if that 
you know, that buyer the first time around, maybe they did something to the property. They started to make improvements or left a bunch of junk or something like that. But I mean, that's so rare that, uh, you know, I mean, chances are they did nothing to it, never even went to it. And, uh, you know, they're just ready to try another one. Yeah. Tate, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good I, devil's advocate plays if they're dumping. I think, I think, I think I should be glad that they, they chose me again. Right. Yeah. I guess I didn't upset them when I took away their property. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, this is a no brainer. There's nothing even to complain about this situation. It's like you said, worst case scenario, you make some money, you tie up maybe a property up for a couple months, but if he defaults, you'll resell it. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. I mean, Rachel, do you have any, any uh, devil's advocate ideas? No, I really can't. I think Eric covered like maybe the small chance that he would want to, but I agree with everyone else. Just go for it. Yeah. Tate, what were you going to say? I was going to ask Scott if he wanted to sell me his note. Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, I'm good there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know, we're at that point now where we're going to put everybody on the spot when I say everybody, Eric Peterson, and just ask them for their tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, maybe a quote, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. Eric Peterson, what have you got? Okay. Um, today, I've got an iPhone app called Tetra, T-E-T-R-A. It's basically tries to um, convert your, your phone calls into a transcript. Um, I don't use it myself, but I, I did come across it recently and thought, um, you know, that's, that's kind of an interesting app to be able to um, convert your conversations to text and, and maybe save them along with, you know, your, your lead information on that particular seller. Um, but uh, that's what I got for today. Nothing, nothing too special, but uh, you know, it might help someone out. How do you spell Tetra? T E T R A, and it's an iPhone app. I'm I'm on the app store right now. I don't see it. All right, let me put it. Tetra in my aquarium. I don't see it. A lot of Tetris stuff. T E T R A. T -E -T -R -A. Automatic call notes. Automatic call By notes. Tetra Chrome. I mean, I put the, put oh, the I see. Tetra. Right. Okay. Automatic call notes. Got it. So, um, so you got to use the app to make your calls, which could be a problem if you're, you know, maybe using a Google voice number. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't tried to set it up, but uh, anyways. I think this is kind of cool. Um, it's kind of like Google voice, but maybe easier. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of saying, look, this is for collaboration. So you can easily collaborate with somebody. Never lose track of a follow-up or forget an important date again. Spread knowledge and loop in non-participants by sharing notes. Huh. Cool. Not a bad tip. Um, all right. Awesome. Rachel Mueller, what's your tip of the week? My tip this week is a podcast. It's a, I guess you could say a motivational podcast. It's the School of Greatness with Lewis Howes. Uh, I have recently just gotten into it and become a little bit obsessed with it. When you, you know, spend your days working on the business and doing land stuff and your head is swimming, it's really nice to take a break and listen to this podcast and hear some of the stories from a whole range of different people. And it's really enjoyable. You know, it's so funny. I, I tried to get into that podcast. I couldn't get into it. He was, he was, maybe I just got a bad week where he was constantly selling and, uh, and it turned me off. And that's definitely possible. You know, everyone's going to be different. Yeah. What's funny is the one that turned me on to this, actually, I gave a few a shot, wasn't really feeling it. And I was never really a Grant Cardone fan until I listened to this podcast where he interviewed him. And then I was totally on board. And so that's where it kind of turned me around. Huh. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Lewis Howes, uh, the, it, the School of Greatness? Correct. Is that it? Okay. Awesome. Um, very cool. 
Very cool. Tate, Big Papa Litchfield, what's your tip of the week? All right. So I've got a good quote. Um, it's from the book, The One Thing, which we talked about before on this podcast. Everybody here would agree that they love it. And this is a great quote. Uh, when I was reading it, I was reading it with a highlighter. And um, this is one of the sections that stood out to me or quotes. It said, taking complete ownership of your outcomes by holding no one but yourself responsible for them is the most powerful thing you can do to drive, drive your success. So it's mm. all about complete ownership, right? I, and this I business... I can't think of a quote that's uh, more applicable than what we do here. You're the only one responsible for your success. I mean, yes, we have VAs, but it's up to you to make sure your VAs are well-trained, that they're doing what you're paying them to do, that they're doing it in the right way, in the way that we've been you know, teaching and showing you how to do things. And so ultimately you're responsible. And once you can assume that responsibility, um, success will follow. I love it. I love it. Um, it's so true. And, and uh, you know, speaking of podcasts, Jacko Willink, who wrote Extreme Ownership, has got a, mm -hmm. a, a good podcast. This guy's like a Navy, ex-Navy SEAL and talks a lot about leadership. And to be a great leader, you've got to take extreme ownership uh, or extreme okay. responsibility for everything. Uh, Scott Todd from landmoto.com, which I'm loving, by the way. Um, if you haven't gone on landmoto.com, start listing your properties there. Uh, what's your tip of the week? Okay. So, uh, you know, this, this traveling thing got me thinking, um, you know, you can buy these little hot spots, you know, and, uh, you know, take them with you, but unless you've invested in it, it's not necessarily like, I, I don't know, you know, you could, a lot of times you can go to your local provider and, and get a hot spot or you can tether with your cell phone. We all know that. Right. But outside of the country, it gets hard. Okay, like, you know, if Rachel and Sean were to go to Europe, okay, they got to hunt for a Wi-Fi hotspot. You know, maybe it's a cafe, uh, cafe or something. But check this out, Mark. Check out Skyroom.com. It's, um, it's a device that you can buy. Skyroom? Skyroom, R-O-A-M, Skyroom.com. And uh, you can buy, you can either buy or rent the device, right? So if you buy the device, it's, it's obviously yours. You can buy this device for eighty dollars, and um, you you basically only pay for hotspot on the days that you, that you actually want to use it. So you know, like think think about like if you go to a hotel, they're going to charge you you know fifteen twenty dollars for a hotspot uh, for for the night or a plane or something. This doesn't necessarily work in a plane, but um, essentially you could take this thing and as you travel, you can connect to uh, to your hotspot all day long. Eight bucks, eight bucks per day. Uh, or if you wanted to rent the device, you can rent the device. And every time you connect for, um, for the hotspot, it's like 10 bucks a day. You can wow. take it internationally. It's, it's unlimited Wi-Fi globally. Wow. So it's pretty cool. How, how good is the Wi-Fi? It's, for, it's, it's uh, like LTE. It's, it's, it's high in speed. Or if they can connect to the Wi-Fi, it's, um, it's there. Okay. So for the pricing, three days free Wi-Fi. And then it's got just one trip, rent Skyroam, 10 bucks a day. Well, what they're saying is that if you, if you buy the device, they're going to give you three days of free Wi-Fi, like three days credits of Wi-Fi. So, you know, you're only paying uh, $79, $80 minus the, the value of the three days, $24. So you're paying what, like 50, 50 something dollars for the device. And oh, then, but then bad. if you only want it for a trip, you can rent the device for nine ninety five a day. Um, and that includes your, your days and you only is, pay for the this days. This is way years. better than like a, like a Verizon Fios hotspot, isn't yeah. it? Well, I mean, it just depends on your usage, right? Like, like for me, I, I had one, I had a Fios hotspot and I had to pay like 10 bucks a month or $15 a month. I mean, it was $20 a month for it. Right. Right. Some days I used it. Some days I didn't, but man, may, maybe you even want this in case your, uh, your Wi-Fi goes out. Your internet connection is a backup. This is great. For eight bucks, you just fire it up and it's not even using your data on your, on your phone or your device plan. So now that I I'm thinking them. about it, now I'm talking about it loud, I need to order one of these in case my, my Wi-Fi goes down. I don't even have to burn through my data. I can just connect. I want it. this. I did want I tell you, you know, a few years ago, I did this experiment. I, I basically turned my phone into an iPod touch and then I got the Wi-Fi uh, Verizon thing and I just traveled around, made phone calls on, on VoIP. 
and uh, it was not solid. It was not good enough. Um, I wonder if it, if it's better now. I wonder if it would work. I wonder if we could just all go to iPod Touches. Maybe. I don't know. I got. I've got a buddy. He won't get his kids an iPhone. He's like, they don't go anywhere. There's no Wi-Fi. So they all have iPod touches. Like they need to call me and they, they'll text me. Sweet. Or, you know, use the VoIPs. He's like, why, why am I giving, you know, 18 team Verizon all this money? I'm like, well, you can do FaceTime uh, audio too. You can do FaceTime audio. So, I mean, we might be uh, sticking it to the man with one of these things. I, that's a go, great man. tip. All right. But my tip is actually going to make everybody a lot of money. You ready for this? We're holding our breath. All right. Well, it's for everybody except Eric. It is keywordsonar.com. Keywordsonar.com. And I'll put it in the chat here. So imagine, if you will, this little sort of tool that is scouring Facebook for a keyword. So I, like you know, maybe someone's in a group and says, keyword would be land. Does anyone have any land for sale? Right? Oh, and then you get an email saying this keyword in fa this Facebook group, land for sale. And then you could do an automation where it sends them a little, you can message them, say, oh, are you interested in land for sale? I have some, you know, go here. Frontierpropertiesusa.com, landmoto.com. Rachel, what's your site? We are canopylandholdings.com. Canopylandholdings.com. So, you know, anything besides Eric's site is good. <laughs> All right. Eric, what's your site? Oh, I don't have one. <laughs> Is it S Simple Life Land? No. Landopia.com. Land I, I keep saying Simple Life. Landopia. What's wrong with me? <laughs> this is what happens when I don't have enough caffeine. I love it. If you haven't gone to landopia.com, it's like, it's like the best website, by the way. This is where, you know, Eric shines the graphic designer in them. It's really cool. Landopia.com. So what do you guys think? Keyword sonar. It's going to follow these groups, going to get your, your, uh, your keywords out. And start. How much is it? How much is it? Okay. So that's what I don't know. It says they're in beta. They're in beta. They're free right now. So for three sonars, which looks for your search keywords in a Facebook group and notifies you when a match is found. So you don't miss out on any, important happening. It's free. It's got statistics. It's got referrals. So I should send you guys a referral link and two extra sonars on each sign up. So here, let me send you guys this. So please give me two extra sonars. And now I can, I could do raw land for sale, owner financed land, land in Texas, land in Arizona. Like, you know, I, I'll start doing some keyword research and start doing that. What do you think, Tate? I think it's pretty cool. I think it's a cool concept. Um, the pricing, I'm interested to see what it's going to end up costing us in the long run, right? Like, is this going right. to be so expensive that it's not worth it? But I mean, regardless, if it produces sales and really good leads, I'd pay for it, right? What you know? What I do know is that if keyword sonar can do it, someone else can do it, right? So, um, it's a it's a dog eat dog world in that software business. Uh, I don't think they're they're doing anything that special, where competition wouldn't come in and drive the prices down. Again, I'm going to make the argument we're living in the best time in history ever. Amazing. Well, I thought this was a great roundtable. Uh, what do you guys think? Fantastic. I love it. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, Rachel Mueller, thanks so much for jumping on today. I hope you can jump on next week. My pleasure. Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah, ab yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I want to remind the listeners the only way that we're going to get a, you know, Rachel Mueller to keep coming each week is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the <laughs> podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. Um, flight School is filling up for November, and then uh, we're not going to have a December class, so the next one will be in January. And the prices, unfortunately, uh, are going up 
due to the high demand. So lock in now in flight school. Um, go to the landgeek.com forward slash training schedule a call to learn more. And uh, I think that's it. Are we good, guys and gal? We're good. All right. All right. Let's do this. One, two, three. Let Let freedom freedom ring. Ring. (laughs) Oh, man. That was rough. That was rough. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. So, uh, thank you. No worries. So, Rachel, you're in New Orleans. How's the food? How's the ice cream? I know Sean's like huge into ice cream. Yeah. I mean, ice cream is our main event, but being in Louisiana, like everything is amazing. Two weeks ago, we went to a gumbo cook off festival and ate like four different types of gumbo, just walking around, having a margarita at the same time. Like, not a bad life. That, you, you know, the two of you have lost all complaining privileges. You really have. <laughs> Unbelievable. Eric, are you coming to boot camp? I think I'm in. I just Awesome. The, uh, the final decision, but I think I'm in, yeah. Tell your wife, thank you. Eric, we'll be there if that changes your mind. You should totally come. <laughs> awesome. That San Antonio JW is so nice. It's going to be great. Have you guys booked your flights yet? Eric, Tate, Scott? Yeah. I haven't booked my flight yet. Scott, did you book it? We just booked ours. Oh, nice. No, I haven't booked mine yet. I'm, Are you gonna I'm still there? trying to see if you're going to like move it back to Tampa or not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, man, I don't Come know. Come on, man. I don't know. Or Hawaii. I, I'm not, I, can't, I, I do Hawaii. I would sure. do Hawaii. Like, Hawaii. I'm Let's sure. go to Hawaii. I mean, I, like, think about it. Like, you could sell that thing as a business write off. It is right, like it's everything's a business. Right. Yeah, everything's right, right off. Yeah. All right. Who wants to go to San Antonio? I mean, sorry, Danielle. Danielle loves San Antonio. She lives in San Antonio. Uh, yeah, uh, well, San Antonio. But San Antonio is good. It's a good, easy city to get to. It's a good conference city. It's like Scottsdale or Vegas. I think we're dropping Orlando. We're just going to do Scottsdale and Vegas. Maybe San Antonio. Everybody loves Vegas. Rachel, what do you think? I don't know. I think I'm kind of biased with Vegas. I've never really enjoyed that city it's a little overwhelming but for conferences there's definitely a good range of stuff to do all right well no worries all right well i'm gonna go eat some lunch um try to meet a buddy of mine although now it's kind of getting late like no one can do a late lunch around here i don't know what the deal is who who made the rule up oh we gotta have lunch between 12 and 1 who i think that was me was that you? <laughs> my my <laughs> man, because that's like, uh, oh man, when when I had the uh, when I had my corporate gig, man, and people would schedule an appointment like for twelve o'clock or you know because like f- I was on the East Coast, there's people in the in the you know the Central Time Zone. Oh, they'd schedule these co- conference calls. Like, oh, let's do it at eleven a.m. Central Time. Are you kidding me? That's my freaking lunch time. Yeah. Don't mess with my lunch. Don't mess with lunch. Panera, man. Don't mess Panera. with Panera. <laughs> oh man. I, I I I was I was going to when I was in Hawaii, Mark, I was looking, I was like, please find me a Panera bread. Like cause I was going not to eat. I wasn't gonna eat there. Sure. I was no no no. I was looking <laughs> because I wanted to like take a picture of it and send it to Mark and not say anything, like just text it to you and be like, you know, yeah. just just to get you like, you know, please tell me you're not eating there. I could hear it, right? Like I could hear Mark. And oh, I, I, yeah. I mean, I every it. time you eat at Panera, an angel loses its wings. Hey, if you go to, uh, um, if you go to uh, Oahu, Honolulu, oh, I got two great restaurants, man. What are they? Are they seafood? Uh, no. Well, I mean, yes and no. Like they serve seafood, but um on tuesday of last week we went to um this restaurant called alan wong's and this guy is like a well-known like uh celebrity chef in fact every year that obama was the president and he went to hawaii they ate at alan wong's restaurant that's where they that's where they would go and i'm telling you mark this food was absolutely incredible I had told them, uh, hey, you know, 20th wedding anniversary. So they created a custom menu that day. It said, happy anniversary. Uh, my wife's name, my name, you know, happy 20th wedding anniversary. 
that that and then they all signed it like the entire staff signed the the menu of course they wrapped it up for us to bring us to bring it home for us the food was incredible the dessert incredible the dessert like the dessert they brought us we ordered dessert but then they brought us a like a complimentary dessert and on the uh plate they wrote happy 20th anniversary my wife's name and my name and uh i mean like it was just incredible wow is it a death row meal it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, I got uh, double cooked short rib. Ooh, that's so good. <laughs> drop the mic, it's over. That's a that's a drop the mic. That's yeah, it even, was good. Yeah, man. all right, I'm I'm sold on that. What, what was right. the other one? Fifty three by the sea. This place is uh, it was like the second second highest uh, rated restaurant in, on the island, and uh, it was seafood. They they had short rib there too. I got. Um, I got some seafood there. It was really, really good, man. Like I got shrimp, like some shrimp pasta, uh, mm-hmm. all fresh ingredients, all really good. They did the same thing. Happy 20th anniversary on the dessert, uh, the dessert plate. So it was really good. So good. Yeah. So when we have our boot camp there. All right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, now we know where we're going. All right. Well, I'm, I'm hungry now. Okay. All right. See you, everybody. See you. Thank you. Bye.